make versus buy decision and machine purchase decision. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. And the book that's out on Amazon.com, Cost Accounting for Dummies. So what I have laid out here is an income statement, and we're going to assume that a company called Huffman Corporation has a certain number of sales and units. We have variable sales per unit. We also have variable cost per unit. If we add those up, they total, those variable expenses total $4.75 a unit. We sell the unit for eight. We have variable expenses totaling four seventy-five, so we're left with a contribution margin of three dollars and twenty-five cents. And from earlier videos, you learn that contribution margin is sales less variable costs. Another way of saying that is, is that contribution margin is what you have left over to pay for two things. First of all, contribution margin goes toward covering your fixed costs, which are down here. And anything that's left over is your profit. In this case, excuse me, there's a loss. So contribution margin goes to cover your fixed costs. And if anything is left over, a profit. In this case, we have <coughs> a contribution margin A minus B of 130000 We see that fixed costs, ads and salaries, and company-wide expenses total 160. So we end up with a net loss, <clears throat> A minus B minus C, of $30,000. So that's where we start. And what happens is we get a special order. Now, there's two things to keep in mind with a special order. The first is the special order assumes that you have extra capacity to make product that you're not using right now. And the other thing with a special order is that Fixed costs are already covered by your previous business, by other production, because you weren't planning on the fixed costs, so you covered your fixed costs with your original production. So you can see here under fixed costs, they're not included in your decision about whether or not to take a special order. What you do include is you have to include sales. You have to subtract variable expenses, just as we did before. And what's interesting is, and what most people don't realize initially seeing a special order, is that you don't have to have the same price that you did before to make a profit. The price can be lower. In this case, the price is only $4.450 a unit. But because you don't have fixed costs to cover, $4.50 a unit is profitable by $37.50 because. The only costs you have to cover are the variable expenses. You've already paid your fixed costs. So sales in blue, less the variable costs in red give us a contribution margin of 75 cents a unit. We multiply that by the number of units in our special order, 5,000. We get that 2250. Five, 75 cents contribution margin times the 5,000 to get the 3750. And because we don't have any fixed costs to cover, 3750 is also our profit. How about a make versus buy decision? So here's our current process making the unit. And we already saw these numbers at the top of the page. We saw that when we make the unit, right now we're running a loss of $30,000. Well, what if we went out and we bought the unit? Now, what changes in a question like this is that you have to include a line item called purchase costs because you're going out there and buying the item rather than making it yourself. In this case, it's $4.90 a unit. The sales number is the same you'll see that because somebody else is making the unit, we don't have direct material, direct, direct labor costs because we're not making the unit. We have a purchasing cost line item here. We also don't have overhead over on this side. So actually direct material, direct labor and overhead go away. None of those costs over here because somebody else is making the product. We are paying for somebody to make it. 
we still have shipping and handling costs. We have to get the product to the client, and we still had to pay sales commissions for somebody to sell the product. It turns out that our variable expenses are a little higher. They're now $6.15 as opposed to $4.75. So as a result, our contribution margin is lower. Now it's down to $1.85 a unit as opposed to $3.25. The big change, though, is, is that <clears throat> there are company-wide expenses totaling $80,000 that go away because, again, somebody else is making the product. We still have to advertise. I'm sorry, the salary goes away. We still have some company-wide expenses for the home office, but what goes away is the, some of the fixed salary. The fixed salary may, go, may have been going to pay somebody to manage the production and we don't need to pay that anymore so we gain that sixty thousand dollars it's not a cost anymore but if you look at the bottom line even though we save sixty thousand dollars we still end up with a loss however the loss is less at twenty six thousand dollars and thirty thousand dollars now obviously we can't operate at a loss indefinitely that's not why we're in business but in a short-term scenario, we might be willing to go out and buy the product as opposed to make it, hoping that by lowering costs or increasing business, we can eventually get into a profit position and we can get there faster by buying the product than we can making the product. Again, this is only in the short term that we would operate at a loss. This example is the same, except that I change the units from $40,000 to $60,000 produced. The per unit costs and sales price doesn't change, but the dollars do. And what we find is, is that if we're making more units, we're going to incur more direct material and labor costs. By buying the unit at the same $4.90 a unit, you have to consider that the impact of not paying direct material, direct labor, and overhead goes away at an even bigger rate. The dollar amounts of material, labor that go away are even bigger if we're producing more items. And overhead as well, based on applying overhead to production. So what happens is we have more savings by buying the item. And if you work through the math, we end up with a small profit at $60,000 of production if we buy the item. And the reason is that we're saving more on mater direct material and labor if we produce more. To wrap up <clears throat> this video, we have the purchase a new machine versus an old machine. And you can consider replacing or repairing your car because one of the decision items here is What's the repair cost on your current machine versus the maintenance cost on a new machine? That's a big issue. So let's say that you purchase a new machine for $400,000. So we debit new machine $400,000. We have annual depreciation, which is going to reduce the cost of the, that old machine. We've got a market value and a book value. We have annual operating costs. So what we set up in the T account is, well, what happens to the old machine when we take it off the books? Well, we had an original cost of 400000 in Brown. We're taking off depreciation off the books one year's worth. So our cost less some depreciation gives us a book value of $320,000, which is over here. So what we're taking off the books, if we net the original cost less the accumulated depreciation, we're taking off the books a book value of $320,000. So this entry just nets the two together as a credit. We sell the machine and it's the old machine at its market value of two hundred thousand, and the difference is we have a loss on sale because the book value of the machine that we're taking off the books is more than the cash that we get in the door when we sell the machine for its market value. Now things get a little more complex when we throw in some other factors here. 
So we look at the old machine versus new machine, and we look at the difference in profit each year. And there's an assumption here that the revenue being produced by the machine is the same, 224000 a year. You'll note that the depreciation expense is a little different. The old machine depreciates more. And we also see that the new machine has less operating cost, 67.5 versus 90. So not surprisingly, the new machine is contributing more to profit each year. And we can add up that difference in profit and say, by using the new machine for four years, 2012 through 15, we have a total profit difference or increase of 170,000. So we're better off buying the new machine. That's as far as we're going to get on this video today. If you go to the website, stltest.net, you'll see our toughest accounting topics, which are small group live chats that we have on the most in-demand topics. You can see the courses here and the dates and times are constantly updated. And you'll also see that um, Cost Accounting for Dummies is our book that's out on Amazon.com. And you can see that this is a picture of the book. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.